Pearl White. Vivacious, a pleasingly natural actress, Pearl White was a symbol of her times, of woman's struggle for political and social equality in the early 1900s. Instead of just demanding equality with the men, Pearl showed that she was their equal and more. At a time when movie heroines were coy and helpless, Pearl White was dashing and self-reliant. Pearl White's first serial, and still the most famous of them all, was The Perils of Pauline, made in 1914. The Indians believe Pearl to be a long-awaited goddess. If she survives the ordeal of the rock, her immortality will be proven. If not, then her sacrifice will appease the gods. With the First World War in progress, Pearl's enemies became spies and saboteurs. Here, in 1917, in a serial titled Pearl of the Army, she's on the trail of the master foreign agent, known only as the Silent Menace. We commented earlier on Pearl as a symbol of woman's fight for equality. Over and over, as if to emphasize this, she'd take on the male villain single-handed. And continued it was, chapter after chapter, with Pearl ever close on the heels of the silent menace. Once in a rare while, Miss White would exercise her feminine prerogative of being womanly. She'd let herself be rescued by the hero. Is the unmasking finally at hand? Hardly. This was still only chapter five, and the audience was way ahead of Pearl in figuring out that this was only a red herring and not the silent menace. Just before 1919, Miss White gave up cliffhanging to star in full-length society dramas. But in her last feature, Made in Paris, she came back to the kind of role her fans liked best. Even the title signified a return to the pearl white of old, The Perils of Paris. None of Pearl's serials were made in Hollywood. For her backgrounds, she used the still wild landscapes and mushrooming towns of New Jersey and New York. This film, Plunder, in 1923, brought to a close the career of the greatest of all the serial queens. The plot was about buried treasure, but all that really mattered was Pearl's brand of fast action. Plunder is one of the rarest of all the Pearl White serials. This episode was copied from the only known surviving print.
quicksand. chance in a thousand. Pearl bowed out of movies while she was still on top, leaving her work as a yardstick for all who came after. Before Pearl White, there were other serial queens. The very first, in 1912, was Mary Fuller, whose What Happened to Mary series was produced by Thomas Alva Edison's own movie studios. Helen Holmes, of the Hazards of Helen. Railroading was her specialty. In every episode, she was in action on, and very often nearly under, a speeding locomotive. Then came Helen Gibson. The airplane was in its infancy then, and the automobile and locomotive still represented the ultimate in speed and power. Standard equipment in a hundred different serial plots. The villains have weakened a trestle. And Helen has to get there in time to prevent the wreck. But of all the serial queens who followed Pearl White, only the beautiful Ruth Rowland was a serious rival. Ruth Rowland specialized in outdoor adventure and daredevil stunts. Serial is Ruth of the Rockies, and Miss Rowland has little choice between two consistent enemies, fire and water. So it went, week after week. But as the serials smashed their way into the 20s, the ladies relinquished much of their dominance. Women's votes and other rights were now accomplished. And, as if in keeping with social progress, the serial queens were now content to do their cliffhanging under the protection of a much more authoritative male hero. Other changes reflected the march of events. Tempos were faster. The heroes, like Herbert Rawlinson here, were breezier and more dapper. The 
the high cliffs of the mountains were pikers compared to the man-made chasms of the big cities. Ten years had gone by, but the password was still continued next week. Serials were box office and meant big money in the 20s, and a lot of big names starred in them. Jack Dempsey, Gene Tunney, Red Grange, and the greatest escape artist the world has ever known, master of mystery and illusion, Harry Houdini. One serial high spot saw Houdini suspended over a vat of flesh-eating acid. Anyone coming to his aid through this door would unwittingly plunge him to a horrible death. Cereals, like the grown-up fairy tales that they were, made use of another basic ingredient, horror. It was usually concentrated in the form of a sinister hooded mystery villain. Guessing his identity was part of the fun of silent serial going. Mechanical monsters under control of arch fiends were another Saturday afternoon delight. Many of the serials were brilliant in their handling of impossible situations. When a serial was made quickly and without imagination, the results could be surprisingly crude. This serial is typical. Here is the frog, sinister ruler of a vast empire of crime, bent on controlling a scientific formula with which he can rule the world. A fake doctor's office serves as a cover-up for the frog's headquarters. The heroine, Neva Gerber, is kidnapped. Knowing that the police are on his trail, the frog camouflages his hideout. Judging from the lack of logic, the script seemed to be written only as shooting progressed. However, serial fans were remarkably loyal. And even though an aging Ben Wilson, as the hero, Officer 444, was approaching the end of the trail as a serial star, his youthful fans still applauded this somewhat unconvincing battle. But the frog is still at large. 